tricuspid valve, identify the valve. Tricuspid, tricuspid valve. Uh, they can also be identified by the chambers. It could be the right atrioventricular valve. This could be the left atrioventricular valve. We can do that also. Okay. Let's put in this pair of hearts. So I'll do a little shell game shuffle here. Okay, keep Kim on her toes. And I like this pair of hearts because they were made by the same manufacturer and they have the same quality about them, same details and stuff. Okay, and so um, we look here at the heart. Um, and what vessel is this? Pulmonary trunk. This one? Aorta. What's missing? Dumb model maker, bad model maker. <laughs> the ligamentum arteriosum is missing, isn't it? Yeah. What vessel is this? Superior, Superior vena cava. And then way down here, inferior. inferior vena cava. Okay. Now, we look at that and we compare it to this model. I take this model and turn it around, and I see something strange. The, inf <laughs> the inferior vena cava is a different color on these two models, isn't it? It's blue on this model. Why? Deoxygenated blood coming back from the periphery, from the systemic circulation. What about this one? Why is it red? No, no, they didn't goof. This, this is one case they did it right. Oh, my God, it's coming back from the lung. Coming back from the placenta. This is a fetal heart. A little baby heart. Okay. See, okay, the adult heart here should be how big? Size of fist. Fist. Okay, the baby heart here should be how big? Size of, their Size of your thumb, their fist, your thumb, okay? This little tiny thing should only be just a teeny little smidgen thing. Okay. And we look at it, and what's this vessel again? Pulmonary trunk. This vessel? Aorta. Now, why do I keep asking the big... Wins like that all the time. But look, what does the pulmonary trunk here do? It anastomoses. Yeah, the word is anastomoses. The the pulmonary trunk anastomoses with the aorta, because the aorta is taking the blood that's going to eventually go to the placenta to become oxygenated. And so, in the fetal heart, there's this little section that does the anastomosing. It's called the Ductus arteriosus. Ductus arteriosus. Okay. Also, in the fetus, okay, this heart, open it up, it's got a hole through it. Foramen ovale. Okay. The foramen ovale. And the purpose of the foramen ovale is to get oxygenated blood from the right atrium to the left atrium. So that, ox remember the oxygenated blood came up the inferior vena cava, didn't it? Mm -hmm. So that oxygenated blood has to go from the, from the right atrium into the left atrium, and it has to go then down into the left ventricle and get pumped up the aorta. And this model does a good job of showing you that the most highly oxygenated blood in the fetus goes to the head, goes to the brain, and so on. Okay? Uh, designed to, to hopefully clear up a little bit of one of the difficult areas in the circulatory system. And here's your aorta, okay? And the diaphragm is sitting right here. And so these are the phrenic arteries coming up to nourish the diaphragm, like we saw in the chart, okay? So those are pretty straightforward. In fact, the phrenics aren't even on the list. You don't have to know them, but they're pretty obvious. But here we have that celiac trunk. And the celiac trunk comes out, and, and it, it's very short in reality, like less than half an inch. And it gives this series of branches. This is obviously larger than life size. It, it gives a series of branches here. And the first branch is one that comes up called the left gastric. And the left gastric comes up, and, and you've got to visualize there's a stomach sitting right here. And so inside the lesser curvature of the stomach, the left gastric comes up, goes around in that, less, in that curvature of the stomach, and it meets here the right gastric. 
And, and so they form an anastomotic loop, the right and left gastric, okay, form that loop. The celiac trunk comes out and, and it dead ends, it, it's all, it more dead ends than bifurcates, but it bifurcates into these two. Going left is the splenic that runs all the way over to the spleen. And going right is the common hepatic, which gives rise to the hepatic proper. And the hepatic proper comes up and gives oxygenated blood to the liver. It's, it's supplying oxygenated blood to the liver. But where the common hepatic gives rise to the hepatic proper, it gives rise to also, like the gastroduodenal, and the, that right gastric comes somewhere off the gastroduodenal. The duodenal comes off the gastroduodenal, down here. And then the, gap, the right gastroepiploic comes off and goes around the greater curvature of the stomach, forming another anastomotic loop with the left gastroepiploic, which is coming off of the splenic. And so these follow the greater curvature of the stomach. And again, they're in an anastomotic loop, which is kind of a fail-safe thing, so if something happens to one side, the other side can still feed that portion. Yeah. Direction of blood flow? From high to low. Okay. <clears throat> Where does blood flow? From high to low. Now, was that a cop-out on my point? Yeah. Part? Yeah, it was. It was a cop-out, but that's what these anastomotic loops are about. If the flow gets unbalanced, it still goes from high to low, and it still gets everywhere in the loop. That's the point. Okay? okay? Um, this guy is a little anomalous. His kidneys are too high. <laughs> his kidneys should be coming out down a little lower, and his uh, gonadal should be coming out down a little lower. Okay? Because we've got the two renals going to his kidneys, the superior mesenteric, and then the gonadals. And way down lower, there would be an inferior mesenteric coming out, but we didn't put it on this guy. But does that help a little bit, get you a picture of, of the stuff coming out of this middle part? I'll, I'll just change the model. Okay. We'll look at another blood flow model. Is that going to work? So would you give us a blood flow question? Is the blood flow question only going to be the blood flow thing will, should only be, uh, the trace of drop of blood should only be on the, the lecture exam. Sometimes you will see on the pr lab practical, like, name, you know, I could put a, a, a tag on here and say, name the third artery, including this one in sequence. See, so you go, hmm, vertebral, basilar, posterior cerebral. Okay, so you count up and put that one. Okay. What we have here is a model put together 